Okay, so then at least for now, the last game, the group of you guys were walking through the forest dis discussing what could be up next for them uh, in the upcoming town that you guys could see. You guys could see the um, this, this township's uh, high wooden walls. Evan seemingly trips over a stone hand reaching out of a bush to discover it was one of those monsters from the forest completely petrified. After being frightened from this, Evan took a closer look into the forest and noticed a large floating eye creature with tendrils deep within the forest roaming, almost hunting. Quick on their feet, the group gathered together and ran towards the town walls to, uh, to be confronted by a woman named Valley who let them in and questioned them where they would be able to help within the town of Grimwatch. Here, Valley instructed Evan and Todd to visit the tavern, Gertie to visit the survivalist, Roger to the abbey, and Grobbit to the vendor. Roger finds himself in the abbey, worshipping the god of Lathander and Lumoria, asking the main cleric, Dudley, uh, what services he could be, Dudley recommends that he uses his able body to help and repair some of the town walls. And off Roger went with his stone cold justice and some nails. Within the tavern, Evan and Todd met Colette, a bartender who asked um, what skills Valley had sent them to help with. Evan had was sent to help in the kitchen and was sent to go help uh, Butch, a woman in the kitchen preparing a large dinner to the town, and was told very quickly um, to go get some chickens. Evan turned back around and decided to head straight out towards the survivalist, and off Evan went. Todd was told to go help with entertainment and went to go, go speak with Lane. But Todd found himself in a disagreement under uh speaking with lane about becoming his second or his opening act lane wasn't impressed about the idea of a magician but welcomed it more or less yeah <laughs> gromit was sent to gromit was sent by valley to see amaral a local item vendor who was surprised and delighted that she hadn't seen a grung in a very long time here they bantered over old costumes and outfits where Gromit ended up purchasing a bucket hat with a logo that spelt MILF, Man I Love Frogs, written on the side, as well as he bought a sombrero with a poncho and a guitar and a detective's hat and detective's outfit. Proud with his new hat and outfits, he goes with he goes to the ca the tavern wearing his poncho outfit, strumming his new guitar. At the tavern, he finds Todd preparing to do his entertainment for tonight. And it is here that Colette also asks if Gromit will join the entertainment for um, the guests, their main guests of honor, Mr. and Mrs. Grimwatch. It is here that uh, Gertie was out speaking with, what was her name? The survivalist, Flint. And seeing that she had a few dire wolves within her tents. Couple of good boys. Yep. Gertie and her seem to be in a bit of a... Um... Oh yeah, I like that character. Which one? <laughs> Flint? Yeah. She was a, a no nonsense uh rod of chickens. Yeah. Well, I don't believe you. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the keys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um Gertie and her seem to get along about um the survivalist aspects of life. But uh Evan intruded, saying that he was sent by Butch to come see the hut. Flint hated the idea that Butch kept calling her uh, her little tents huts and that you guys were completely out of chickens. She said that uh, she demanded more chickens for the dinner tonight, 
So she gave you guys the keys and recommended that you guys not go engage with the large chickens. You guys asked about the large chickens and she wouldn't give you much information, just said to avoid them or to use some of your survival gear. She gave you, uh, she gave Gertie, I think, a trap and some rope saying just in case you guys encounter one of these giant chickens and on your way out of the city after you talked with the valley that you guys were going to go to the chicken coop it was then that the a stagecoach came from the upper hill leading to grim like to grimwatch manor came down and you guys saw two people come out you guys saw the carriage drop off a man and a woman you saw in red and purple robes a very young looking victor grimwatch and what you imagine is mrs grimwatch coming out of the stagecoach in a green and gold dress and that's pretty much where we'd be at she said that the chickens were bigger than him yeah yeah i would yeah. rather just deal with the normal sized chickens yeah <laughs> i'm surprised you, you i'm really surprised the question didn't come out like can we still eat the big chickens <laughs> i mean you can really eat well them. you gotta kill it first i'd imagine <laughs> and that's the hard part probably <laughs> at least for evan and gertie on their own the big chickens are the tastiest. That's why they fight back. <laughs> and maybe Evan's a big chicken. And maybe Evan. <laughs> Evan starts contemplating more about the afterlife. <laughs> <laughs> Evan starts having an existential crisis. <laughs> maybe we're all just big chickens. Yeah. <laughs> so if you guys played Half-Life, check this part out. These are the barnacles that you normally throw stuff on. Your thing just keeps loading. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let's see if I can fix that. Okay. These VR headsets are crazy whenever it's trying to do that kit. Uh, any news if anybody else was able to get in? No. I... Oh, now I can see. There, yeah. That better? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So these are the barnacles. Ooh, okay. They are pretty big in real life. Oh, the camo. <laughs> Three max left. Yeah, now it's not even loading other pages for me. Really? On D and D Beyond? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, that could be a sign. That could mean that they're working on it. Well, I got through, so I don't know. Just keep trying. My dad, anyway. Like I said, you worked really well with in your intimidation show. Yeah. Well, we're in the heart of the. Uh, Maybe. So long, your role. Mother, she craves violence. <laughs> well, she found her string, and I'm steaming uh, shrimp dumplings in the kitchen, so it's a oh, wrap. Can I hit this rat? Okay, that's then your fault. <laughs> yeah, it does keep the string, though. <laughs> I'm sure the shrimp isn't helping, but it's definitely a string. Okay. Uh, it's up to you guys if we, we want to jump into this, and uh, we'll try to do as little rules as possible. Oh, no, don't worry. I, I got my character memorized. <laughs> Perfect. Have, have him do whatever you need. So let's start with you, then. <laughs> so the, oh, the ones... God. So then the ones to notice... <laughs> the ones to notice the stagecoach come into town would be those who are outside. Roger, you would have heard the stagecoach of the horses coming down from from the manor, and you would have been able to notice over top of your hammering and nails. Oh, hello. What is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, I can get it. And then Gertie and um, 
Evan, you would have actually seen the stagecoach come down. And these two come out of it. Oh, God. Okay. Hold on. Well, that just didn't work. Oh. So then you two, my hat. you two are with <laughs> So then ate my hat. What the hell? Yeah, so uh Evan and Gertie, you are with Valley basically at the uh the, just about to like leave town and she's she recommends that you get like it's uh it's a little too late for that. I guess we're going to have to wait out for another day. Here our the game. Uh, our main guest. I'm going to uh, be a little disappointed. I got sent on my task to go get chickens, and now they're canceling it on me. What a waste of effort! <laughs> Voice my opinion on that one. Gertie's low key kind of relieved. <laughs> <laughs> oh darn! I guess we can't get these potentially lethal chickens. Yeah. Ah, oh, what a disappointment this is. Yeah, she kind of looks at you and she goes, usually we do send somebody who's quite strapping to gather some of the chickens. Usually Flint is really good. She usually has to she usually has to bring her two wolves with her. Ah, uh, yeah. Gertie just knocks on her back. She's like, yep, I'm old. <laughs> Certainly not the, the strapping woman I used to be. <laughs> But the spirit inside is still still there, isn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Sass for days over here. Uh, she kind of like looks back towards uh, the stagecoach. She goes, "Well, maybe just put that sass aside. We have our uh, esteemed guests here, down from Grimwatch Manor." As uh, you see, like she waves towards the stagecoach. I can't hear you. I can't hear you now. Are you on the other headsets linked? Yeah. Okay, that any better? Yes. Yes. Okay, Perfect. Go. Okay, back to normal. <laughs> so uh did uh so the, we saw the grim watches leave the carriage yes they have stepped out of the carriage and they haven't noticed us no but uh valley is beginning to wave towards them okay yeah i'm going to uh kind of duck behind whatever <laughs> i can to like make sure that i'm not apparently a line of sight between us and grim watches okay so i have a i have a town map and you are going to try to run behind the stagecoach that's no, in... I'm, no, I mean, I'm going to get Valley in between us and the Grim Watches, so I'm standing behind Valley. Yeah. Instead of, like, trying to completely move... I'm just trying to make sure the line of sight can't see me. Yeah, it's not focused on me. Right. Oh, okay. I'm not the main character currently. I refuse. Okay. I want to be background noise mm -hmm. and not in the forefront. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, do you want to roll some kind of uh, stealth check? Well, that's up to you if you want me to roll one. Sure. sure. You're not exactly, you're just kind of trying to be out of sight here. But yeah, you can okay. roll me a stealth check. Do I you have fall it? face down in the mud with a natural one. Uh, you are in clear line of sight. Yep. So uh, apparently as I try and step behind her, she kind of just <laughs> steps away. So it's like apparent. She looks back at you and she's just like, don't be shy. They're quite nice. I'm new in town, and I don't know if they like outsiders. <laughs> we get outsiders all the time. New help Come on, is. Valley, respect his boundaries. No means no. <laughs> okay. Well. Yeah, this uh... is a goblin slayer. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> so, I'm curious then, since. Uh... Our guests showed up. Do we no longer need additional food, or are we just gonna do with what we got? I think we're gonna I think do that's with what. Why they wanted additional food is because of the guests. 
I think we're gonna have to do with what we have. Usually, once uh, our guests arrive, everybody in the town gathers together. Mm. As it's here that you can see, um, like some of the other villagers from the inn that you guys didn't go visit, or the blacksmith, start coming out of their buildings in the abbey and start coming towards the stagecoach with Victor Grimwatch and uh, with both of the Grimwatches. And you can see that they start coming towards them, just uh, having light conversation. And it's there that the Grimwatches are, are seemingly giving the people in the town what seems to be things that they could use within their town, whether it's sewing packs, medicine packs, paper and books and ink, hmm. tools and utensils that they've brought. Or do they like bring in packages like you, like the military gives to their folk countries here or something? <laughs> it's not even military, it's just resources down to the township. Where did they get these resources from in order to give them out? There, there is a giant manor on the top of the hill. Right, yeah. and they just magically pop up there or were they taken to the manor? Why did they hoard, hoard the resources and hand them out casually if they don't? I mean, I don't understand. Were these finances here. with the taxes from this village? Are yeah, they like, paying for their own donations? Valley like looks over at you guys. We don't pay anything towards Victor at all. There's no taxes. And Tom so, hears so no did, taxes. You say so. Where did no uh, taxes? Oh boy, I know where to put my home. <laughs> where did the Grim Watchers accumulate these? bring out to give i mean i'm sure there's got to be some kind of trade amongst them mm -hmm. victor does trade down with um vox hollow every now and then and comes back and when he whenever he does one of these ceremonies he brings gifts to the town hmm. nothing more nothing less look i've been to vox hollow those are gifts kind of gifts don't come from vox hollow well she kind of looks at you and looks back at Victor, the Grim Watches. We're very appreciative to have him around. Yeah, I guess you would. She's you know, just kind of going to leave. You just don't Gertie's ask gonna, questions. Yeah. Gertie's okay. going to lean over to Evan and just feel like this feels like a cult. I'm going to look at Gertie and say, and it definitely is. <laughs> it definitely is. It's a different shade of what they got going on in New Mucker. Mm -hmm. Roger, you see the stagecoach come down, but you are on the uh, outside walls there, and you are able to, um, with a natural one, you are able to catch like mm -hmm. the eye of Evan and Gertie down at the main entrance. It's up to you if you do want to go and engage with them or what you would like to do. You um, haven't had direct contact with Victor ever before. So you seemingly wouldn't know who this person was. All I know is the rip, and that means donation boots. <laughs> and you do see them giving donations out to the Abbey right now. Yeah, but they're not giving donations to the uh, the Church of the Rising Sun, or, or the Sun Chasers. So uh, I, I think I'm going to have to go talk to them about that. Have you issued the collection plate yet? No, but I have one. <laughs> you better bring that to his attention then. Look, the back of his tabard says, I collect the ties. <laughs> so, Roger, what would you like to be doing in this moment? So, so I'm going to finish up on the wall I'm working on. Mm hmm. And, uh,. After I, I, I'm done hammering the last board in place, kind of wipe my brow and start approaching. I'm like I see, I see Evan trying to hide behind somebody, and she just steps out of the way. And I'm like, really, dude? Whatever. And I'm gonna walk just directly up to Victor Grimwatch. You can see right that there, there's like a bit of a crowd of people, and as you begin to walk up closer to him the cleric man that you talked to in the green robes before dudley kind of like points you out and just even before you approach goes well this is a strapping gentleman that came from out of town 
His name is Roger. How would you like to introduce yourself? This is Victor Grimwatch. Oh, shit. If Evan sees this exchange and the fact that he was pointed out immediately, he puked a little bit inside his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Roger's like, huh, name sounds familiar. At any rate, um, hello, I'm Roger Ulfra. Yeah. I, uh, come from New Mundrick, from the Sun Chasers. That is quite the distance you've come. Yeah, it's, uh, been out of the way, but I'm here to protect some people. Um, uh, I, I start looking around for, uh, uh, Gertie and, and Evan, and then oh. as soon as I spot them, I point them out, ah, oh, yeah, those guys. Uh, my, my current char- they're my current charges. He like it's looked... here in the headlights. I just kind of walk forward as if I don't know anything. He slowly just looks over and with the cold, still demeanor, without blinking, looks at you all and turns back to Roger. It seems like you are strong and sturdy. Thank you for your help around town. I'm sure all of you come equipped with all of your own interesting quirks. Am I right? That's a funny way of saying it, but yeah! Quirks. Right. Well, Grimwatch is open to all new kinds of help. I'm I'm glad to help nice people, like these fine villagers. Of course, any kind of um, irrational violence would be exiled from our town. Well, that's good to know. We're here for one another, aren't we all? As you can see, a lot of the people are nodding. Are they nodding in sync? No. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Not like, yes, master. (laughs) <laughs> a very mild case of PTSD it's, I'm sure it's nothing to worry about but uh yeah Victor looks at you and goes if you ever would like to challenge yourself more than what we have here if Dudley recommends what you've done is enough we could even do with some extra work up at the manor it is quite a older building and some of its foundation does need some work it does pay well well i'm happy to help but unfortunately uh young evan over there has me conscripted to help them with their duties. Why, of course. But your stay here and helping the people of Grimwatch, we would greatly appreciate it. You see, he kind of like grabs you tightly on the shoulder with one hand. Nods. Flex my shoulder into his hand. (laughs) Gives it like a little squeeze and then uh, lets go. And he goes, come on, my dear. And uh, they, like, walk together towards the tavern. And it's at this moment that inside the tavern, you guys can hear Colette, William, starting to holler out inside the tavern. This is back to Gromit and Todd. You can hear them. The stagecoach is here! The Grimwatches, they've arrived! They begin to... uh, work a little bit more on cleaning the the large dinner table that's set in the center of the room. Oh, boy. I got costumes if you want to wear one. What kind of costumes you got? (laughs) What kind of costumes don't I got? I got I got this bucket hat one. I got the detective one. I got the cowboy hat. I got the construction one. I got the ice climber one. Uh, 
uh, regular one man village people. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what is that? I I don't know. I I felt compelled to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh hmm I suppose mm, I'm kind of like scan or I, I like look around the uh the crowd of people and I'm like does anyone have a top hat uh did I get a top hat no I didn't R roll me a pure luck check 10 and up a guy named Zagard, who also has a great sword on his back, has a top hat. <laughs> nine and below, he does not. <laughs> nine and Where no, nine and below, he has it on the bar. <laughs> so there's a top hat in the room at least. Yeah. There's... And you get to <laughs> it without costing. You just fight. need a hat. Um. um uh. Seven. <laughs> Seven, it's on the bar next to his drink. The bartender's gonna be like, on the bar Sir, next to his drink. I'm gonna need you to check in that hat. <laughs> <laughs> Not the sword, just the hat. Yeah, sword. <laughs> the hat, gotta go. I like lean into the open air where no one's standing. I'm just all like, hey, Dad, follow my lead. <laughs> and I'm gonna like. <laughs> Go up to this guy, right? And like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go up to the bar, like on the side opposite of his hat. Okay. Right? You can, you can see that. Um, you go. Oh, you can only approach him from the back side. You can see that he's got like a. You could see that he's probably rather tall. That he's got like a smaller waist, but he's got these big shoulders that have this draping cape off the back. You can say that you can see that he's got shaved sides to his hair, but he's got like this like straight up mohawk through the middle with a greatsword on his back, and he's got like this huge pint of ale in front of him with a top hat laid down beside him with a big like gleaming greatsword on his back. You can see that he's got like these high the like almost knee high like leather boots as well you can see that he's like a strapping strong warrior okay now at this point you, you can't take his hat i want to see him wear it <laughs> excuse me sir you see that like he turns to you and puts the drink down and he turns to you and there's a large scar running from the underneath like the lobe of his ear down across the front of his neck, leading down into his shirt. What do you want? He's a top hat wearing fool. I can tell. By his I, uh... <laughs> I had a question, sir. Is that your hat? What's it to you? Just wondering. I mean, the mohawk top hat armor plus greatsword look is Unique. Goddamn right. So, uh... It's called professionalism. <laughs> I suppose. I guess. Really quick, uh... How much do you like that hat? My you daughter, a... my daughter gave it to me before the village burned down. It's one of the last things I got. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. <laughs> it's, it's a recognized hat. It's got a name, probably. You know, I, I can get you many hats. I don't want many hats. I only got one head. I see. Mind if I borrow that hat? Absolutely not. Now, I understand uh, talking may not be a big thing for you there, uh, big boy. Sounds but, like uh, understanding isn't a big thing for you either. He grabs his drink and just starts to guzzle it back. 
not breaking eye contact before closing the drink down on the table again. Uh huh. Well, what do you say, good sir, about renting me that hat? <sighs> and I like slide a copper piece across the bar at him. <laughs> you know there's just, a just for the night. You know there's a vendor outside who could take uh -huh. your shillings elsewhere and pushes your money back. Like I slide the copper piece back, but there's a second copper piece. Are you sure, sir? You can see that he, he begins to give more attention to his drink than you. Uh-huh. And the hat's behind him, right? No, it's right in front of him, on the bar, right beside his drink. But he's looking at me, right? Now he's giving more attention back to his drink. Right okay, so he's not looking at the hat, right? It's right next to him. It's right <laughs> next to his drink. Is, is he drinking or is he not drinking? Look, he's, he's, in, he's totally aware of where the hat's at, man. He's, he's aware of the hat, eh? It's right in front of him. Yeah. Wait, didn't you say I was standing behind him? You said you you said you went ne you said yeah, you went next right, to him. Right, right, right. Look, sir. I really need to borrow this hat. <laughs> just just for like a second. Just just to put on my dumb little show, I will give you your hat back. You didn't come prepared to your own show? No. I didn't come prepared for a magic show at all. What kind of... You realize we've just met, but I don't come prepared, and then that's the end of the sentence. <laughs> I realize... I realize we've just met, but I didn't even come prepared to my own life. <laughs> I do it on the night. No I'm, I'm a lawyer by trade, sir. I am a lawyer by trade. I don't do the whole magic shtick usually but I mean let's be honest here and I kind of like pat him on the shoulder I'm like sometimes a guy's got a razzle dazzle you know what I'm saying <laughs> he looks at you and goes what's a razzle dazzle let me borrow that hat I'll show you <laughs> I'd, I'd rather if I didn't nah you ask me what the razzle dazzle is I'll show you the razzle dazzle I just need to borrow that hat Wink, wink. <laughs> Why are you winking? Like, like I say the words wink, wink at him. <laughs> you can see that uh, he like puts the drink back down with one with his like open hand, and you can see he puts the other one on the table, and you can see that it's a jar like a large metal grieved fist. <laughs> and you're just not entertaining any more of your questions. How about you leave it alone? And call it a night. We don't want to start anything in front of the Grim Watches. Yeah, maybe you don't want to start anything in front of the Grim Watches. Maybe you want to let me borrow that hat. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> You see, he takes the hat and he puts it on top of his head. Looks like it's in use now, buddy. Get lost. I like walk away, but the whole time I'm just holding my eye contact with him, just walking backwards <laughs> back over to my frog friend. It's like, oh, I will have that hat by the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> My hats aren't good enough for you? Uh, yeah, uh, Gromit. Nice Gromit, uh, very nice hats, Gromit, but, uh, <laughs> Comes back. Oh, without what a particular hat I wanted. <laughs> Alright, well, I'll 
get it. I get it. You, you just take my hats. It's Fine, give me the bucket hat. <laughs> give us a bill, bucket hat. <laughs> I'll take the bucket hat. <laughs> the bucket hat is the one with the engraving. Oh, oh the one that's in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Man, I love frog. Yep. Yeah, I'll take that one. <laughs> if I ever do find that hat, I am buying it. Oh, I thought that was like an image that was just made. Hold on. I don't know. If that's a real hat to buy. I think it is. It's on Etsy. An embroidered hat. Yelp. Fifty dollars. Oh, $50. oh. <laughs> Jesus, that's a lot for a hat. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not Etsy, so. Not it really. might just be a... Be a you do realize, I make 89 cent character models and then sell them for like five dollars on etsy right there um, there's a 19 dollar one here it's pretty good it has a picture of a frog and it says, so this is yeah. this is somebody wearing it by the way <laughs> i sent it in the i sent it in the facebook chat They don't seem extremely impressed with it, but I like this one. This one's Anyways, so you got the uh the man I uh man I love frogs hat, the bucket hat. I have the bucket hat. And you can see that um William and Colette are putting out like wine glasses and, and uh Finishing putting the plates down with uh, dinner knives and forks and stuff like that around uh, each each set of plates, ensuring that it's fully prepared with like little napkins and stuff. Mm -hmm. I kind of like look around again real quick. Okay. Does anyone have a quarter staff? Oh my god. Sure. Okay, cool. There's people with quarter stats. Nice. Yeah. That's all I needed to know. That's it? Is there any sheets around? A sheet? Yeah. Like, like you know, like a tablecloth. There's like anything. dinner, like the dinner tablecloths on some tables. Cool. Like on your guys' small little round table right now, there could be one. Cool. That's all. That's all I needed to know. I'm okay. good. Yep, that's it. <laughs> okay. Um, Gromit, are you doing anything with uh, the new knowledge that the Grim Watches are in town? Um. Panicking? Panicking, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of an alias. <laughs> Since I'm in a big sombrero and a poncho. And I need, uh, maybe I can get like a fake mustache or something. Is there anything I can do? <laughs> <laughs> fake mustache. Just take some coal and like give yourself five o'clock shadow. Can do that, yeah. Some ash, yeah. Master of just... <laughs> you come another pass. I'm Senior Gravito. Uh, okay, so panic. Okay, so. I'm looking for something to cover my face or to cut with my disguise. Cover your face more with? Maybe. Like if I could get a fake mustache or. Uh, maybe if you were back at the item vendor with all of the uh, outfits, you could have okay. dived a little bit more into that. How much time do I have? They're outside. Yeah, but how long does the how long is the time until the show starts? Uh, they said it's gonna be like at least 
like an hour. They're just going to set up and get everybody kind of prepared. So you could just run out and try to run by them. Yeah, well, I'm sneaky as hell. I will. I know. I'll. I'll, I'll switch my costume quickly. Um, <laughs> what is the most? <laughs> okay. Okay, I was in ice climber gear last time, so you know that. Um, hmm. I know. Maybe Foreman Gromit would get by. Okay, so you switch into Foreman Gromit. I will consider it a disguise kit of some kind if you'd like to give me a stealth check with a disguise kit um, as you go out the front door I will roll yes a perception check or an act plus six 23 hey Robert's back all right cool we all died. Victor Grimach. Oh no, I've been here. It's like the character sheet's back up online. Okay. I got mine on my phone, but uh, I don't trust it, so I just took a shitload of screen caps because it won't let me export it. I'm still down, but I know my. What was what was a plus seven. What was your to what was your total there? Twenty three. Okay, just to let you know, I rolled a nineteen on the dice. So as you uh, go out of the building here in your foreman uh, your foreman outfit, you see that the large crowd kind of uh, spots you. Uh, like, uh, like the large crowd here, kind of like you, you try to weave in between the large crowd and try to get around them really quickly as they are headed towards the tavern. But you see that you go to look up quickly and you can see that Victor and uh, Mr. and Mrs. Grimwatch both lock eyes with you just as you go by. Nobody else in the crowd notices, but they both lock eyes with you as you go by and don't bring any more attention to you, bringing their focus back to the building and walk inside. Excuse me, I'm just going back out, gotta do some inspections. Cause I got the inspector hat on, the foreman. They continue walking just towards the tavern, but they did notice you trying to be sneaky. And uh, it's there that, Gromit, you are so sneaky that you can see that there is uh, uh, Amaria, who's the item vendor. You can see she's even walking towards the tavern. Okay, so I get her and like, I need a mustache. <laughs> Whoa, where did this, I didn't sell you this outfit. This looks great. Oh, it's great. It's great. This Straight looks. This just doesn't Personal just look production. like an outfit. This looks legit. It is legit. <laughs> <laughs> but I need a mustache to go with the rest of my other costumes. Oh, uh, I'm guessing growing one in isn't isn't a possibility, is it? Yeah. No. Wrong species of grown there. That's racist. Oh yeah, yeah Todd's online. Oh boy, here we go. Yeah. Okay, we're making it. See, I knew my persuasion and my deception were both plus seven. <laughs> God, that's so much. <laughs> Look, I need all of it that I can get. <laughs> a mustache, a mustache, a mustache. As you guys go back... <laughs> you guys go back to the item vendor, the, her, little, uh, her little hut here, and she begins to kind of flip through all of her... Uh, suitcases of stuff ten and up she has one it look like <laughs> I rolled a five you see that she cannot come up with a fake mustache oh my god oh. this is useless I'm sorry to I'm sorry to cause you such grievance it wasn't my plan. You look, you look great, though. 
a bit of the mustache. It would have been the 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 top cheese. The the mustache the on top. Sure, I don't know. I don't know Stanley's. That's okay. How about we go and just have a nice dinner, and we can see how your performance does with the guitar. Fine. Right. Back to senior Robert. You change again? Yeah. <laughs> just like right in front of her. <laughs> well, it's a pod show and a sombrero, so it's not that hard to. Right. You uh, switch back your outfit, and you walk with her back towards the tavern. It is here that uh, back outside um, Dudley instructs everybody to go back uh, to go into the tavern like moments before for like the party to all move inside the tavern and you can see that most of the town people there's like a a blacksmith there who's uh, like a built strong short man and he's got like uh, soot all around his hands and stuff, but he's he's got like some water in a cantiner and he's kind of like washing himself up. You can see that there's some people who are working at an inn, um, nicely dressed and walking towards the uh, the tavern as well. And same with the people from the abbey. The Grim Watches are also walking towards the tavern. What would the rest of you guys like to be doing? Which is. Gertie, Evan, and Roger. Well, well, Roger's gonna go up to Evan and Gertie and be like, Hey guys, you uh, look kinda sweaty. You gonna be yeah. something, like working out or something? Well, you the person you just blessed. talked to is the one that we thought killed us, but we came back. Oh! Oh. Yeah, but you, you know, it off. looks like our cover's been blown already, so look, I might as well ride this one out. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm sorry about that. I didn't know who that was. Did you not hear anything about our trial, like at all, right before we came into the Thunderdome? <laughs> well, to be fair, I didn't know that it was Gr Victor Grimwatch until I talked to him. Has no have you talked to nobody in the town about who uh, lives up in the castle? What were you doing this whole time? I was fixing a wall. She's just gonna grip him by the shoulders and just say, we don't live here. <laughs> we don't have to invest in these people. They've literally done absolutely nothing for us. Yeah, but they're nice people. You don't know that! <laughs> Roger, you'll have to forgive her. She spent a lot of time in Box Hall. People are trash. <laughs> wow. That's the Vox Hollow speaking. No, those are facts. <laughs> um, well, I'd imagine the rest of our crew is probably already inside the tavern. And most likely their cover will be blown just as quickly. So, knowing them. Yeah. Pretty confident that would happen. Um, we might as well go get something to eat then. I'm sure we're invited to this dinner that the Grim Watches are part of. Yeah, let's uh, get something to eat. Yep. Hopefully it won't be our uh, final meal. Don't worry, I've already had one of those. Let's uh... Let's just pretend like he doesn't know anything. That's what I'm going to tell myself, at least. It's a new Grim Watch. <laughs> he, he doesn't know us. He killed okay. us. Why would he think that we're still around? Okay. You guys walk into the tavern, and you can see that um, Todd is there sitting at a table by himself with a bucket hat. You can see that he's kind of uh, working with a bit of a tablecloth. You can see that this is your guys' first time inside the tavern, but there is a long, like, dinner table that could seat about 30 people in the center of the room. There's smaller circular tables kind of around. There's a stage as well with a elven man um, 
working on a loot. There's a bar, like a long bar at the back with uh, like an older man with no hair who's a bit chubbier behind the bar. And there's a younger woman going around uh, preparing the long dinner table. Everybody kind of gives attention to the crowd of people that come in. And they go, welcome everybody and welcome the Grim Watches. Come in, take a seat. You can see a lot of the people start just heading towards the table and finding themselves a nice seat. I find a spot where my back is against the wall and I'm facing the door. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gromit, you are behind all of them outside. Well, I'm going, I guess, going back in because I got to get ready. Okay. So I didn't see anyone of our gang going? Oh, you would have seen, yeah, you passed them all. They wouldn't, they didn't notice you because you were so sneaky. <laughs> but then you were behind them going back in. In the sombrero. <laughs> With the sombrero. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, and as you guys sit down, you can see the door opens again, and uh, there is a woman and Gromit in a sombrero, and a poncho with a guitar coming into the room. No, I am Senior Gromito. Wrong person. Ah. You don't know me. I've never seen you. Senior. <laughs> You know, you looked an awful lot. I mean, I don't want to be like grown races, but you do look <laughs> an awful lot like our buddy. That is racist. I don't know. Our buddy didn't have a sombrero. No, that's true. That's true. But he, he, he like changes clothes all the time. He did it like three times on the way over here. But I'm pretty sure he didn't wear a sombrero. Yeah, that's true. Sorry, I didn't mean to be like grown racist. Well, you were. <laughs> you know. Are you guys saying that out? Friend. Are you guys saying that out loud or just between like your little group? <laughs> oh yeah, probably right up to the stage. <laughs> oh, right out loud. Yeah. Then. Hundred uh, percent. Roger's not even being like remotely stealthy about anything yeah. here. Then it's a uh, a Maria. The item vendor is just like, oh, well, he came by our store, and he bought this little number, and he seems to really enjoy it. <laughs> I it just glare. Sound like Arkram. Yeah, he just stole it. Stole it. He was quite a, just... was quite a pleasure to work with. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely about, not Arkram. We're not talking about the same guy here, though. Sorry, man. Sorry, man. I did not mean to confuse you. It's just like he has a very particular pattern. Yours is like really close, but the sombrero and the and the poncho. No, you're right. No, you're not the same girl. Sorry, man. Really um, uncanny. Bro. She kind of looks over back at you, Gromit, and goes, "I'm just staring at Roger." <laughs> <laughs> She goes like, did, did oh you... motherfucker! <laughs> did you come with like another buddy? Did you like lose him coming up here? I'm sorry if you did. Well, I mean, he's gotta be somewhere here. Um, just hopefully he hasn't been turned into stone by those creatures outside. Oh well, yeah, that would really suck. I don't know how to fix that shit. I don't think you can. I mean, you're a stone. How do you turn yeah. that back to flesh? It's almost like you would need a spell or something for that. It is here that almost. Colette and William uh, get get out from behind the bar and are just like, if everybody would like to take their seats, we will uh, issue out each order. Order? Oh, there's a sign seating? Uh, no, just take a seat. Things will... You, uh, sit among friends, sit among strangers, see what you'd like. Roger's going to sit directly next to Victor Grim Watch. Okay, and on the other side of him, obviously, is his missus. And I'm on the mm -hmm. other side of her. 
Wow. <laughs> Just kidding. No. Like I said, I want a different spot. <laughs> Do that though. <laughs> sure, you convinced me. Okay. If I can help it. I would try and Jimmy my way in there. Like, yeah, excuse me. Yep, yep. Push. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> you sit down beside a um, a beautiful looking. Are these booths? Are, are these booths or chairs? No, they're chairs. You're sitting at a very long dinner table that can fit about 30. If somebody is sitting beside Victor, I'm going to pick them up, chair and all, and move them. And pull my chair to sit next to me. Okay. He sees this happen and goes, that's some rude demeanor coming into town like that and simply demanding your own space like that. A lot going on. Oh, sorry. Was this was was that spot taken? No, feel free. Hey. I'm an open book and welcoming to sit next to anybody, anybody who is a good resident, and those who will work with the town of Grimwatch. Well, as long as I'm here. Glad to hear it, Roger. I'm sure we will make fine work and use for you. It's an odd way of saying that. He turns back to his missus, and uh, you can see that she looks over to Evan, who sits down next to her. You can see that she's got like a long gold necklace and like a gold pendant on as well in her uh, green and gold dress as well, Evan. Have to play three times through fork if you need help. She looks at you almost confused. <clears throat> We're good. We may need some help up at the manor if you're willing. I mean, what kind of help do you need? It is an old manor. Some of the foundation needs a bit of work. Like masonry? Carpentry? Like masonry. Ah. I need someone to lay some stone. No, no, no. Sometimes remove some stone. Okay. She kind of like looks you over really quick. Hold on one second. You can see that she's observing you. Even from beside you. Looking kind of at what you kind of bring to the table. I get that a lot, don't worry. I'm sure you would find yourself enjoying the machinery. Maybe the use of dynamite. What? I don't turn down a good explosion. I have a feeling that you're very good with tools and maybe inventing new practical ap applications. I have a feeling you just like telling people what they like to hear. I think you will enjoy your stay here. At Grimwatch. Thank you. I think I will too. She turns back uh, as a. On that offer. Sorry. So I just like, and I'll think about taking the up on that offer. She nods and turns back as you see that Colette and William take the orders of Grim the the Grimwatches first. As they come around, they have like a little notepad. So, um, wine for the each of you. And what would you like for your your dinners? As you can see that they both order the chicken and potatoes to go with their wine. Next in order, they go to, uh, I guess you guys are closest. 
Evan and Roger, there is an offer of pork and beans or chicken and potatoes, wine or ale. Ale, pork, and beans. Hell yeah. I'll also go for the chicken because that's going to be a hot commodity. I'm pretty sure it's going to be gone quick. I didn't get a chance to get it anymore. <laughs> Do you want the ale or the wine? Red wine. I'll take, I'll take water. Would you like the ale or red wine? Yeah. Wine it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Colette writes you down for a red wine. As they move around the table, Gertie, you are the only other one to be sitting at the main head table. Colette comes to you and goes, I don't think we've met you. Um, my name is Colette. I work here in the tavern. Um, if... If you're new to the town and came with your friends, um, the ones who are doing the entertainment tonight, and she points to the, the small circular table with Gromit and Todd sitting at it, they got their own table. then you are, you are welcome. <laughs> They're at the kids' table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then, of course, you are more than welcome to stay. What would you like? The options were what the chicken and potatoes, and then what was the other thing? Pork and beans. Pork and beans. She'll do the pork and beans. <laughs> and then there's red wine or ale. Uh, what did the uh, what did Grimwatch get? Did he get wine? They both got wine. Yeah. Oh, she'll get wine too. All right. So. Uh, they come around to Todd and Gromit last, as you guys are on the outer side, like the outer tables. You guys both had an ale before, before, beforehand, but they offer you guys a meal as well, saying that the chicken is all out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what, what's the other one? There is pork and beans, and they can get you another ale if you'd like one. That sounds great. Okay, I will put uh, ale plus one for grommet. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll take the pork and beans, I guess. <laughs> okay, would you like another ale? I'll take a water. I, I, need, I need to have my head straight for this. <laughs> yeah, she looks at you and nods and goes, yeah, so an ale or wine? <laughs> Fine, give me a wine. I won't drink it. <laughs> okay, so you had an ale earlier, now you're going to have a wine. Okay. Plus yeah. Wine. Okay. A nice fine wine to go with my fucking pork and beans. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Evan's just trying to do the math and making sure that maybe this meal might not... I'll drink my shard of with to this pork and beans. beans. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Is that elf sitting with us at the table too? Uh, no, he's up on the stage. Oh. He's up what about the stage, the, uh, yeah. the woman from the hut that had the dire wolves? Does she make it to the party? She's not here. Ooh, she don't care. That's why we're gonna get along. <laughs> but it shows you do care, so she's. <laughs> yeah, well, I have alternative means to be here. Sure. It's here that Colette kind of calls to the to the group of people. As we get everything prepared for the table here, and we begin to serve all of you, we'd like to start you off with some entertainment from tonight. And we had some outside uh, people come from this afternoon who are more than willing to help out with that. We've had uh, a great group of new people come to town, and we are more than pleased to encourage all of you to stay. But uh, without further ado, for our first act, we're going to do 10 and up is Gromit, 9 and below is Todd. That's a 3. <laughs> below. The gentleman, a magician. Magician. So I, I, looked, I looked down at my hat. I look over at Gromit. 
I look down at my hat again. I go, Gromit, would you mind letting me borrow your sombrero real quick? <laughs> <laughs> Change my mind. What are you gonna do with it? This is my disguise. I don't want them to know me. I'm here. <laughs> look, look, just, just trust me. Just trust me. Okay. I need this. Okay, and I. But now I gotta change. I can't have a bunch of man. Look, no one is looking. Completely throw. Literally, everyone is looking. Yeah. <laughs> okay, one sec. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I hop under the table and I put the hat on and then I come back up. You come back up the, with the MILF hat that says, man, I love frogs. And, and, yeah, and the hoodie and the blowfish. <laughs> <laughs> so I stand up, I put the sombrero on, and I'm like, okay, it's time to razzle-dazzle. Colette kind of fingers. like... Colette kind of... So I snap my fingers and my... <laughs> My jacket takes on the form of a really, really, like, sequined the fuck up mariachi. Ooh. <laughs> there we go. Motherfucking glamour weave coming in clutch. Let's fucking go. As a... Now, now what does Colette do? Colette was about to announce and be like, oh, sorry. Um, is your friend part of, like, an assistant of yours? Is he a, a helper? No, no, don't worry about it. Oh, you're a solo act. I'm a solo act. As you see that um, Lane gets off of the stage and walks by you, he goes, hey, man, good luck. Don't screw it up. Hey, man, bite my ass. (laughs) (laughs) He's just like, what? And just begins walking away. And I proceed to make my way to the stage. As Todd, you make your way up to the stage and you can see that all eyes and fixtures are on you. Your heart begins to pound as you can see that even your eyes are locked with the grim watches. All of your friends sit around the table with what seems to be those who took your life not too long ago. The new, unfamiliar faces are here, bound, looking at you. And just before you make your act, we are going to cut over. Palm sweaty, knees good. weak, arms are heavy. <laughs> uh, spaghetti. <laughs> Mom, spaghetti. spaghetti. <laughs> we are going to cut back to the moment after the message was sent from Sir Nicholas up at Grimwatch Manor. You were left alone for hours with a little notoriety and some copper to send out a message to your friends in almost like a desperate demeanor. You sent coordinates in a place that you think that you are. You remember sending it to Gromit, your most faithful and trustful friend. (laughs) With a small... I'm pretty sure we're all going to (laughs) die. Small message returning back to, um, to you that Gromit said that he was in perilous danger, about to go into something called the Pantheon, and that he wasn't sure if he was going to live. You received no message afterwards. But hours still go by within your room, within your study room, without any concern or anybody coming to give you any disruption. It is not long before there is a fine knock at your door. Yes, who is it? You see that the door just slowly swings open without Victor himself even touching the doorknob. Well, Sir Nicholas, some new information has come up, and I am going to have to leave. The grounds here are yours, and your things are in the study. 
all of your things, you are welcome to have them all. I'd recommend that you stay while I'm gone. I have gotten news that your friends do live, and they are coming here. And um, how is it that they live? I'm unsure, but from my reasoning, it seems that the goddess Lumoria maybe have given them a second life. And if that is true, that means I need to go do some work of my own. You are free to roam. Do as you wish. But I'd like you to come with me for a little bit. I'd like to talk and have a bit of an understanding. I don't really see how I have much choice in it, so I'm not as well. You see that you leave your room to a hallway, and he walks down to seem to be like a study room. He opens the door, and as you follow, you can see that all of your all of your equipment lays there on a, on a table, fully for you to re-equip yourself with. I'm definitely going to take all my equipment. Yep, he watches you take it all with without any kind of hesitance. It's all there. By no means do I think that I should fear you or your friends. This was merely a matter of ensuring that we could have an agreement. There's nothing personal. But Sir Nicholas, well, there was a time that I wish that we could have longer together. I wish that you hadn't ran off from the observatory. We could have had more time researching and strengthening your skills. I don't see why you think I would have helped you even back then. You seem to think you have some sort of understanding of who I was before who I am now. That being said, what makes you think if I'm one of these archangels, I'd do anything to help you willingly? Because you and I seemingly were friends before. You came to me for aid and questions um, regarding Zealanthia. And I told you all that I knew. I told you all of the scriptures and all of the knowledge that I had. You guys only sought out to destroy it. And that wasn't something I was going to let happen. As you guys begin walking through Grimwatch's manor, you guys see that you are walking back down a hallway, and as you guys come towards a door, it begins to slowly open up, and it leads into a room filled with these, like, cobbled statues on platforms. You can see that there's statues of each of the archangels. You can see that there's a statue of him. You can see that there's a statue of what seems to be like his wife and stuff like that. You can see that there's a little bit of light being like, sh like shined onto each statue as you guys walk through this, uh, this lobby room. We can still work together you and I. I can give you back much of what you had missing, but that is only if you are willing to cooperate. Why would I cooperate with someone who wants to see the world destroyed? I don't wish to see the world destroyed. I wish to see a new world come. I wish to see a world where people are not killing each other for gain. I wish to see that there is the collaboration, the new existence of our planet. I wish to see the evolution of all of our growth. We could all become one. Make us all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
he seems to have this delusion that Zealanthia will make everyone one, and everything will be right as rain, as you see it. This but is not... surely, somewhere deep down, you understand. In order to create your next world, this one has to die. You may be right. Over the centuries of his existence, or its existence, it has shown the paths and all of the tribulations that the planet has been through, all its cataclysms. There's moments where the world has been destroyed over. All civilizations, down to a few marital numbers, have been lost, just to rebuild again. You act like civilization doesn't start from the very basis of violence. We can change that. With the core of Corium, we can use it to develop a symbiosis with the nation of people. I don't think you and I have seen the same Corium experiments. Mm. Those things are inherently violent. But they are, by their accord, of what they are told what to do. They are not, they are not violent time. by nature. They are violent from the resistance of those of the, the people not conforming to the new planet and the new, the new world that is to come. They do not w know what is to come. They seem to fear it as well. The day of reckoning is almost here. You guys see that you walk through this room and you guys see that you come to a, um, like a, like, like a large lobby, but you guys are on the second floor to the north end. There's a stairway leading down, but there is a wrap around and there's like a large opening that you can see the lower level. But you guys lead southbound and east to another doorway and go out. And you can see that this is almost a wraparound balcony that goes on the outside second floor of the manor. And you guys stand at this balcony as uh, you can hear some of the waves crashing against the cliffside that the manor is actually set on. And you can hear like the whistling of the far distant ocean winds coming across here too. It's here that the wind catches a bit of his hair and like ruffles against his robes. As you don't wear any robes, do you? You do. I do. The cold air whiff, like goes against your robes as well. And it's here that you can see down the cliff side. You can see that there's a bit of uh, like there's the forestry in uh far in the distance but you can see a small village which you can imagine is like the township that's below them grimwatch as you observe the town below it is a completely scorched town the walls are all broken all of the buildings are destroyed and nothing really exists with life there Let's say I did help you, Victor. What on earth is it? Is there even it for me? If I really am one of these angels, I'd be going against my very principle. Principles, by the way, I think I still hold dear. For what? What a world I died protecting multiple times. Disintegrate. Fall apart. Be remade into something I have no control over. Maybe you can find new vision. Maybe you can see that the Old Testaments and the ways of the gods who fight for the glory of people's uh, favoritisms seem to be out of date those gods need to bow down or die 
That's the thing about gods, isn't it? The gods for a reason, Victor. You, Zealanthia, you're not going to kill them. You're not even going to stole what they want. You're just another act and another play that someone else is making. You're the hero in your story, but you're a footnote in someone else's. You've always surprised me, Sir Nicholas. You can see that a bit of his robes begin to move away. You can see his arms are behind his back. Oh god, don't flash me. <laughs> but like out from the top, you can see a tendril starts to come out that there is a blue book that is wrapped up in a tendril that comes out of his um his robe here and begins to open the book in front of him. This blue book is very clearly your old sorcery book. Your old wizard's novel. I'm staring at it. Like old, old, like your pre-death book. This is something you begin to recognize. Your magic and the abilities that you are able to construct and the magical gifts that you gave to the people were phenomenal but we're going to set a new precedence your friends are coming this way and i want to show them a little bit of what used to be you see that it flips to a page and the tendril kind of like another tendril comes out from his shirt and extends forward and you can see that the sky kind of like goes this crimson color tidal waves begin hitting the side of the, the cliff side more rapidly the winds begin to pick up more as this big crimson ball begins to hover over top of what seems to be the village of grimwatch in it's like destroyed manner this was a spell that you used to have called balance shift it changes it seems to change the time of an air like the timeline of an area that's affected as the crimson ball lands towards the township you see that it almost brings it back into a vibrant area the walls are rebuilt the township is alive Do I know any ramifications of that spell? Can I think of them in my current state? You know that it, it it was used to almost be like a large communicate with dead kind of spell or a raise dead kind of spell. Ooh. But it also seems like with alterations to the, the, to the spell, this seems more like not a holy magic kind of spell this seems more like a large area necromancy kind of spell look at victor and be like do you have any idea what you've just done the ramifications of using that time is not a plaything you are right. It is not a plaything. But it is just... It is the tipping point of something greater. You held so much power inside of you. And we wish to develop it. I want you to stand with me and not against me. I don't know if I can ever stand with you, Victor. Not with what your goals are. And not with what you're willing to do to achieve them. That is fine. You see that out from um, the main lobby room comes to the balcony is a reaper 
one of the hooded cloaked figures that just kind of hover in place. And you can see another one comes from the other side of the balcony. So there's one on either side of you. Victor looks at each of the Reapers. I would like you guys to give our guests the your fullest attention. He kind of like points his hands out towards each of them. And as he like waves his hand back, you can see that the hood comes back on the one that's next to you. And what's underneath the robes there seems to be a young Victor Grimwatch. His other hand flips the other robe back and you can see comes a woman in a green and gold dress with long blonde hair with a golden pendant. They will be coming this way and I'm sure they are coming for you. But I'd like them to experience the wholesomeness of the town that used to be here. The town you destroyed, no doubt. There was work of the manor to be done, and the excavations to the manor required all hands on deck. What an easy sacrifice that must have been to make for you. But the sacrifice of the sacrifice of few for the to benefit you for a new world for many. You see that the reapers kind of uh, now that they're in there, the these new forms begin to float off the balcony down towards a caravan and get inside it and begin trotting down towards Grimwatch. Now, well, with my friends thoroughly threatened, I suppose this means you need to go uh, commune with your eldritch tentacle. Actually, I do not. You see that the tendrils go back into his robes and kind of tuck away. I have gotten news about Fox Hollow. There seems to be some kind of something of interest and fam fam familiarity down there that I seem to, uh, I apparently need to go give some interest into. Would you know anything about that? Mm, no. Very good. You can see that two more reapers come out from the sides of the uh, one comes out from the building or from from inside the building the lobby and another one to the outside of the balcony you will have some company while you are inside my manor surely your friends are not in danger this is all just something for them to interact with Surely they wouldn't do anything reckless or careless to get themselves in danger now, would they? As he begins to walk <laughs> back inside. I'm sure you know your friends' demeanors much better than I do. Oh god, the fucking dude. Yelling at me. <laughs> they wouldn't put themselves in danger for no good reason now, would they? <laughs> You severely underestimate my friends, and me, but mostly them. Define the word danger. <laughs> I am going to dash away while he's going and doing that. Uh, you are at like a wraparound balcony. Like, I'm going to make my way back to to his study. Oh, okay. Um, so he, he heads into, like, the lobby, and you're going to run back through the statue room and run straight through the hallway towards the study? Yes. Okay. 
um, as your footsteps kind of like dash and run through the building here, as you burst back into the study, you can see he is standing there. Uh, damn, that's creepy. Now, you will have a little bit of overwatch, let's say. These reapers of mine will accompany you and watch over you. Ensure that you do not get yourself into too much trouble. Your friends will make their way up to the manor here. I'm sure they are here to rescue you from something that you do not need rescuing from. You and I can work together. But if you wish to leave when they arrive, you can discuss that with them. But please feel free to look around the manor. In, in the meantime, anything you do, they will communicate it with me. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure you have more than just them watching me. You would be right. Nothing seems to ever slip by you. <laughs> the longer I spend here, the more of my former self I seem to find. And I'm not so sure that's a good thing. He kind of like walks up closer to you. This was the last building you ever visited. This was the last building the four of us ever went to. Nods his head. The you last were... expedition was into your crypt. Below this boss of a building. It wasn't a, a crypt. It was the aqueducts that lead down to the tunnels. Know that they were there before I was. Before I gained residency of this building. Those tunnels were here before me. They were just awaiting to be found. Enjoy your okay. time. Enjoy your time, Sir Nicholas. I am going to look for a book in his study. You got it. You see that Victor turns his back to you, walks towards like a large glass window, and as he's just about to like get to it and touch it, he vanishes. You see that there is two reapers in the room at all times watching over you floating about five feet off the ground. And within his study, you can see that there is, <laughs> you can see within the room here, there is lined like bookshelves along each of the walls, but there is one long study that leads like towards that glass window with one red book open with like a one like ink and quill with a like a high back red velvet chair I'm gonna try and find a blank book oh wait no I got my, my old spell book back never mind yep um I am gonna try to find a book on time magic oh. or a book that describes a specific spell if he has it as you go to begin to look for that we are gonna jump back yeah. Yay. Sure to todd to todd looking at the audience 
Palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. <laughs> Drips of sweat. Drips of sweaty. Of Not to break the complete fourth wall, but uh, you guys are in pretty deep. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> it's probably fine. <laughs> Okay. Senores e senoritas. <laughs> tonight you will be dazzled. You will be amazed. For tonight, I make a man disappear. You can see, like, everybody goes, <gasps> and then call it's like, he didn't used to talk like that. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? He took my fucking. <laughs> <laughs> the whole stick. Lie, cheat, and steal your way to the top. <laughs> now, you may be wondering will he do it now? Will he do it later? Of course, it must be later. You build up to it. <laughs> Everyone knows this. This is all part of this show. And I look amongst the crowd and I find the guy with the uh, the quarter staff and I point him out. You can see you that know? there's a like a heavy set kind of like guy. You can see that he's got this like large gut that kind of like surrounds his yeah, like like a tube around his entire body. You can see he sits there with his mouth completely open looking at you, but he's got like a quarter staff in one hand, almost like a cane. Ooh, me? Yes, you, El Guapo. Come what? to me. El Guapo? My name's Freddy. Come to me. Oh. And like, as I say it, like, he feels a tug on his shirt. He's not wearing a shirt. He's not ah, wearing. He feels a tug on something. <laughs> wow. <his> okay. <laughs> a tug on his chest hair. He pulls a on tug his stick. on his. Wow. Okay. <laughs> his he feels a tug. On his something. <laughs> on his stick. On his quarter. Oh hey. Uh, <laughs> oh man. Someone's pulling my stick. And he gets up. <laughs> And uh, Anthrax is just gonna lead him to the stage. <laughs> you know, I ain't, I ain't no grandpa. I can walk myself. Get off me. Senor, no. tell me. This quarter staff you have, it no. looks very powerful. Oh, yeah, I like what. I whittled it out of like a stick of an oak tree, you know. It was on a Thursday. It was raining out, and uh, yes, it, it just great. like and went out and caught a couple of rabbits, rabbits out in the field. I just completely Tru ignored him. Just he's talking, his <laughs> and I completely ignore him. This man here has probably killed many a rat with this fine staff. Am I correct? Nope, rabbits. Uh, I usually catch a many rabbit. A fine rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Allow me to see your magnificent stick. Okay, man. Hold out my hand. He hands you the stick and he goes, It's just kind of like a good walking stick for me. I like, completely I just... go into ignoring him and I just go right back to the uh, crowd. I kind of get like, I think I have like As a. You can see. I think I have like a problem with like my appendix or something. Just my feet always hurt. I'm ignoring this dude. My knees hurt. This I'm always is a sore. Fine quarter staff i kind of tap it around a little bit just to show the crowd like yeah this is this is a pretty good uh fine piece of equipment right here i am gonna need that back my knees it. my knees are bad and i start spinning it faster <laughs> and faster and i toss it up into the air at which point anthrax catches it and just keeps it spinning in the air the the crowd kind of like look around Ooh. And How I'm does like, he do it? my hand out for a second. And it doesn't come down. And I look to my left. And I look to my right. And I just kind of shrug. And I go <laughs> right back to the man. Tell me, senor. Uh-huh. Have you... Do you seem to be missing something? 
Well, like I could do with a couple more teeth. Too bad. And I pull out a <laughs> copper piece. <laughs> oh. You see this, senor? Uh-huh. And I kind of flip it around for the audience to see. Mm-hmm. I believe this has a very, very nasty habit of going missing. And I put it behind my back. And yeah. I finally cast the fucking cantrip I've been holding on to forever. That cantrip is pocket watch. It's going to just disappear into a uh, tiny, tiny little, um, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, um, but same thing as a uh, portable hole. Demi-plane. Okay. Demi plane, there we go. Tiny little demi plane. Just whoop. Anything that weighs five pounds or less can fit into this. Cool. Yeah, when and you. I pulled my hand out. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, like I usually get copper going missing because I got a gambling problem. Oh no, wow, where'd it go? Crowd. <laughs> so I show my hands off the crowd. It's gone. Whoa. Ooh. You hear in the back wow. really quick. Hold on, you hear in the back really quick. Lane's like, magicians suck. <laughs> I completely ignore him. Okay. And I look at Mr. F- Mr. Guapo over here. <laughs> Which, if I remember correctly, means fat boy. Uh, he is fat boy. And I go, what is that behind your ear? Oh, that handsome. Oh, that is. Oh, fuck. That was handsome, isn't it? <laughs> fuck, what was fat boy? Um, Gordo El- is El- fat. El Gordo. There we go. El Gordo. Look, you're more Spanish I'm than I am. Gordo. I'm Puerto Rican, no, straight up. <laughs> you're not Puerto Rican. You're just a dark redneck. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> Oh, he called me handsome. As you can see, he's got like this toothless grin real quick with no shirt and this big like gut hanging out on him. I jam my fist into his mouth and I cast the spell again and pull the coin. (laughs) I found your coin. Oh, wait. I put it behind my back again and pull out my hand. It's gone. Oh, what's that? Behind your ear. Pop. Oh, make it disappear again. Turn around, senor. You see, like, he, like, stumbles and turns around and goes, man, like, can I get my stick? <laughs> like, my knees are starting to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> my, I think my feet are going to start to swell. I think I got a circulation problem. I reach into his back pocket, cast the spell again, pull the coin out. He's got really tight pants. I work really fucking hard to get in there. <laughs> just, just work with me a little bit. Just work with me. Think uh, thin. Okay. <laughs> so I pull the coin out again. Think thin thoughts, like that salad you've never eaten. You see that, like, he reaches behind and scratches his backside? Ooh. Is that where all my loose change goes? Yes. So I put the coin away and I say, I look to the crowd and I say, too easy, am I correct? They all begin to clap. Ah. <laughs> so, so what are you guys in the audience doing? I'm just staring at Todd. Oh, like... <laughs> So we've got one maze. <laughs> Evan's a big what the I'm fuck. I'm not trying to interrupt you, but like, this is like, what's he doing? The whole coin behind your ear trick? My grandpa used to do that for me. Aww. I'm writing down a new song title that is Don't Give Your Hat to a Lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the- and this is the part. <laughs> And when how's we escalate. how's Gertie reacting to all of it then? Uh, Gertie's mostly just watching Grimwatch and his lady friend. Okay, Show. they seem to be Show. fairly still about every single interaction that Todd makes with his uh, objects. They don't seem surprised. They don't seem super entertained. They seem kind of. At this point, it doesn't matter to Todd. He's actually gotten kind of into it. Okay. And then it is back to Todd. You're having fun. I am. And Todd. I don't care how much fun you're having. 
<laughs> I'm the one having fun. <laughs> this isn't for you. This is for me. All right, Todd. Yeah, basically. You have the floor. So at this point, I'm like, all right, time to escalate. And I grab the man's pants and I pull really hard. <laughs> and, and Anthrax drops the stick down to the crack, at which point I cast it once more because a quarter staff is four whole pounds. And it just whoop, whoop, right down his pants. <laughs> down his just, very whoop. tight pants. Just right down, right into the crack, right into the crack of his ass. Just whoop. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's just like, oh, where did it go? Ah, you are yes, wondering, no. So I turn El Gordo back to face me and I say, sir, you have been amazing. You may go back to your seat. Do not worry. I will give you your stick back. I might need it now. Like my feet are going numb. <laughs> and I shoot him off the stage. You see like, that he begins crap. to walk over before he begins to hobble and he like has to grab a wall and then begins to grab a chair. <laughs> he has long since left my mind skin. <laughs> <laughs> and I look to the crowd and I point at Lame and I say, you kind sir in the audience, come. No. And again, the pooling on the shirt. <laughs> you see like there's a tug and he's like, I'm not a part of a magician's act. I point to the guy next to him. <laughs> you see it's a guy with a great big great sword and a top hat. <laughs> <laughs> I walk out into the crowd to this man. Okay, you walk out to Zagard who's wearing his, to his daughter's top hat. I, I walk straight up into this man's face. And then I turn back to the, the freaking elf man. I turn him the fuck around right then and there and grab his ass and cast the spell again and just whoop, and as I'm doing it, I say, I need to borrow your ass. Mine has a crack in it. Whoosh! And I pull the stick out and I hand it back to El Gordo. Uh, he's almost collapsed on the floor. He's <laughs> he's not doing well. You have been great, senor. He's just like, <laughs> he's <not doing> well. <laughs> I'm glad I could help. You see, he grabs a stick, and many people go over to try to help him get back up and go to his seat. Again, he is gone from my mindscape as I go back to the stage. He kind of, like, the people look at him, and they're just like, I think he might be diabetic, man. <laughs> Do the fuck bad. <laughs> and I'm back up on stage. You and are. I look to the crowd once more. Let's see. Victor Grimwatch had a wife, didn't she? He. Yes. <laughs> Madame, come aboard the stage for my final trick. You see that the laughing audience quickly goes quiet. Oh, I am sitting there big fucking grin on my face they all look just towards her victor kind of looks i am over. putting the charm on as hard as physically possible victor <laughs> looks over goes go on dear we are here for a good time and she stands up out of her chair and everybody is quite shocked but she walks up on stage Kind of like, um, grabs her dress and kind of bows a little bit. I bow right back and say, Greetings, madame. Are you ready to assist me in my final trick? Whatever you have in mind. I point if to I one of help. the tablecloths and it rips away from the, uh, 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 table and floats towards me. Give me a sleight of hand check for all the glass that's on the on the the table. 
Oh boy, Anthrax has a plus two to this. Oh god, oh god, oh god. 14 or higher, you do a good job. Oh shit. Okay, so nat 15. <laughs> okay, you pull it away and even all the glassware just kind of spins and stays on the table. <laughs> oh yeah, just fucking <laughs> maximum charm and badassery right here. And I grab... <laughs> And I grab this sheet, and I say, My damn, are you ready? This will be the most amazing act of this entire night. She kind of nods her head. So, in one quick motion, I whip up the sheet, uh, separating the, uh, uh, the crab from both of us. Okay. And as the sheet drops, I already casted my once per day misty <laughs> step away from the <laughs> away from the stage you're just misty stepping i'm misty stepping <laughs> <laughs> and i am mick the fuck out of there <laughs> oh no 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 even better i misty step into victor's wife's chair oh <laughs> And I just kind of lean over to him and I'm like, Are you eating that? Oh, you missed the, are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? <laughs> <laughs> you see the rest of the crowd begins to clap. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, my people go wild for me, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> and good night. I'm sitting right next to you now at this point. I'm just like, No, just okay. Wow, that was amazing. Yes, yes it was. And I kind of like <laughs> take the sombrero, <laughs> put it on Heaven's head, <laughs> drop out the mariachi outfit to the regular, <laughs> still not dead jacket. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah, <laughs> that. <laughs> is my show thank you and good night <laughs> everybody seems to clap everybody seems to really enjoy let's gonna enroll 3d10 3d20s here you get outstanding um reciprocation from this i gotta uh, like everybody seemed to enjoy it actually very hey. much <laughs> yeah the there crowd seems the crowd seems super pleased and uh, yeah, you can even see like Colette is is clapping pretty well for you, the uh, the bartender lady. What about hey. Griff Watch and his wife? They are they're they're clapping, just very slow. They're copying uh -huh. Evan, obviously. The what? They're copying Evan. Okay. I started that before the crowd started, so. Mm. <laughs> I'll fucking take it. <laughs> and there you go. There was me being a weirdo for about 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You see that um Kala comes over and she's like we have a we have other s seating for you. Yeah, I don't think you can sit here. I just laugh and leave this seat and go back to mine. Very good. And she, she's just like, yeah, that was amazing. A wink. I say out loud and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You take your seat. <laughs> yep, I take my seat. Colette so kind of uh, announces to the crowd here as all of the drinks begin... Um, being given around the table whether you ordered wine or you ordered ale the drinks start being um brought down to all of you bold choice not having people drink before the show starts well they didn't know what to expect here <laughs> i mean if you think exactly. roger was roger was not trying to get an ale during this mm -hmm. crazy <laughs> crazy. yeah maybe you guys are on your second round if you had finished your first at okay, least. Okay. So then uh, she announces to the crowd, "What a wonderful performance from a newcomer, our uh, 
stage performer Todd. The crowd gives an overwhelming response. Yeah. And now, uh, up and coming from uh, the same group, we have uh, a musical entertainment, Gromit. Where's my hat? It's on Evan's head. <laughs> right? I thought he gave yep. the hat back. No, nope, you gave it to Oh, me. the mariachi hat. I put it, I put it on <laughs> Evan. And I'm still wearing it. <laughs> You're going to have to get that hat back off again. <laughs> okay. How far away is... Uh, I can jump 25 feet. Hmm. Trying to think of who would do this. Evan's now thinking about what the hell was he doing? At first, the coin wasn't impressive with that fucking stick. How did he get rid of the whole stick? What did he do? What hat can I use? Um... So, Gromit, a lot of people are focusing on you now as uh, you begin to go up on the stage. You see that the eyes all fixate on you, the Grim Watches, all of your friends. All of the people in the tavern. All right, so I'll walk up on stage. Are you still uh, wearing the poncho? I got the poncho, but I need the hat. I, I throw you the hat. Play Wonder Wall. <laughs> <laughs> I throw, throw me the hat and catch it with my tongue. <laughs> well, it's not the all request power hour. I forgot for a second that you were a frog. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you mean you catch it with your <laughs> right, he's a frog. It's like the length of his body, so you can get it. Yeah. So that's not a lot, but it's quite a bit. <laughs> okay. It took me a minute, but I got there. Okay. <laughs> It's sounds. All right. <laughs> and I start tuning my... This first one's about an old friend of mine. His name's Nick. <laughs> Went missing a while ago, and this one goes after him. <laughs> <laughs> Just poking that bear. You see yeah. it? You just keep poking it. You see that uh, the guy who uh, got helped back into his seat, holds up his drink, and he's just like, yeah, it's a Nick. Buddy, I don't think you should be drinking. <laughs> Shut up. Don't tell me what to do with my life. No. All right, but it, but if you don't leave the tavern, it's it's not our fault. <laughs> what? I'm, I'm just saying, you nearly died getting off the stage. Do you really think you're going to survive that ale? I needed my stick. I would have been fine with my stick. Did you mean my hand song or not? Yeah, Andre? song. All right. <laughs> I start playing the band. All right, do you want to give me a performance check? Sure. All right, right off the hop. I'll let you do it with advantage because you're doing it for a crowd. Oh shit. Shit. Yeah. Three plus performance. This is three uh, twenty. There you go. Everything's finely tuned. Go for it. You have the full crowd's attention. All right, give me a sec. Sure. All right. So I start strumming. I start singing my song. Looking for the goo man. <laughs> it's me at slime. Looking for the goo man. Running out of time. <laughs> Looking for Nick. He's made of goo, gooey and green, and he's texture of poo. <laughs> Flat up your ass and come out your nose, grab your arms, and make itchy poos. Looking for the goo man. <laughs> <laughs> you shrieking the song as you go? Guys, this is going so well! <laughs> and I 
I'm having some banjo solo and I take out my flute at the same time I'm playing both. Okay. <laughs> this is such a cursed session. I love it. It's so good. Oh, this is like... I think my cheeks hurt. <laughs> this is like the like tap a... moment like when... I just... Versus Strahd, like, this is perfect. This is exactly yeah. what we needed. <laughs> <laughs> I spit the flute out and it spins here and I catch with my tongue and keep playing and stuff. You play the flute now. <laughs> playing them both, the banjo and the flute at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I might even be able to, like, shoot something because it's technically a, bag, a blowpipe as well, but I don't know. Is there anything I can... Improvise? Shoot! <laughs> like... I don't know. Is there anything around? Shoot it. I could do that. Well, no, that, that fuck up my hat. <laughs> Is there someone else? I know, I will shoot the top hat guy's hat. <laughs> the hat that he got from his dead daughter? <laughs> Oh, maybe yeah. not. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I respect tats. I wouldn't do that. No, I just do that, and then I end it off with... Oh, that would have been too good. I would have laughed too hard if that was, like, <laughs> saw through to the end. No, I only had those parts. <laughs> awesome. You finish the song oh. there, and you see that the, the crowd... Uh, Receives it super well. Great. Yeah. They should. They don't know who Goo Man is. <laughs> no, no clue. No, they're fucking jamming out to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Look, not every song has to make sense for you to jam out to it. Sometimes you just got a vibe. Oh, I know that's yeah. Why do you think people like Despacito? <laughs> or Island Boy. Or Ed Sheeran. As you uh as you finish playing, the crowd uh the crowd is clapping, adoring the, the performance that you've put on. Thank you. Uh direct to the point I... there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Goo man. Yeah, goo man. Goo man. <laughs> uh, I don't have any other songs. We'll say that one was like, because the solo was probably like three minutes, because I'm that good. Ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was my free. It was the free bird. Oh. <laughs> of as a uh, as your seat is back Sorry. next to Todd. For the for the dinner. Mm -hmm. We sure showed that lame elf guy. You yeah, looking forward to the top of the song, huh? Let's hear his lame original song. Yeah. Yeah. As uh, you guys see that, like hot plates, begin to be served out with uh, your guys's choice of dinner. Begins to get served to each of you. Uh, whoever had the chicken and potatoes or the pork and beans, it uh, it looks delicious and smells just as well. If you got the pork, you got like a a bit of gravy poured over top of it as well. If you got the chicken, you can smell all like the different herbs and spices put in with the potatoes and vegetables and the mixed. Uh, the mixed spices that are here, but everything is hot, fresh, and well done. I spend uh, about 10 minutes going over it with the UV light that comes out of my hand. Do you actually have, are you going to use the spell or something? Yeah, I'm going to ritual cast uh, Purify Food. <laughs> oh, you're going to, can you read that off for me? What's the rest of you guys doing? I am just going to be eating my food 
and uh, talking to Victor at the same time, like, that was really great. Did you see what, did you see what, did they, that was really amazing with a stick? Yes, okay. the performance was very well done. It takes one uh, action plus 10 minutes. Okay. And uh, for flavor, I'm counting that as like just going yep. over it with UV light from like magic. It says, all <laughs> non-magical food and drink within five foot radius sphere centered on the point of your choice within range is purified and rendered free of poison and disease. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. Did you I get the that. did you get the pork and beans? I got the pork and beans. No, and for beans. the and beans. For I got the chicken. Cast. I got the chicken. Oh, okay. Say so if you got the pork and beans too, it's gonna taste and compare and see. <laughs> the difference in taste. So within the ten minutes though, is there anything else that the rest of you guys are doing? Like are you guys chowing down? I know Roger said he's being in the chow down. Uh, oh, I'm just living it up. Well, I mean Okay. Basking in my own glory and eating my pork and beans. Is that elf sitting with us or is he doing He's sitting at like a, a couple seats over? But you can see that he kind of like looks down the way there and he's got kind of like one eye kind of like slanted and almost closed. You can see that he's drinking too many drinks. And he's just wow, kind of like, loser. he's kind of just like, yeah. I bet he couldn't come up with a song like that. He goes, magician, oh, yeah, no. magician I got, suck. I got another song I'm working on. It's called Don't Touch the Mushrooms, Old Shoe. <laughs> Don't touch the mushrooms. If you do, it'll poison you. Something like that, you know. Okay. As a uh, uh, girl, not going to be eating. Um or drinking any of the food because she based on the cultish vibes that she's getting from this place like she's trying to figure out how she would even calculate how to repay them for this because they're probably not going to take her money yeah sure then I would it's within five feet so I got your food too with the radio uh, the, uh, no, it's, <laughs> it's a matter of exchange like Normally, she's, would pay she's for not it. comfortable taking anything for free. Yeah, but with the cultish people here, the fact that Grimwatch is watching over all of it, that would mean she would have to do something essentially for Grimwatch, and she's very uncomfortable with that. So she's just going to sit and behave herself. Yeah, like the within the 10 minutes that, that is still going on here, you see that Evan was sitting next to the missus, and she looks over... At you, Gertie. She goes, You came from quite the distance. Vox Hollow, are you not hungry? I'm sure that the long travel up the up the pathway was the treacherous one. You should eat. Gain your oh, strength you know, back. You know, honey, at my age it's uh it's I'm basically like a camel, you know. I'll just sit and, you know, behave myself for days if I can muster it. Oh, I thought you were going to say you're wondering if you'll make it to the next meal. <laughs> oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> Traveling around with these hooligans, I never know <laughs> if I'm even going <laughs> to... If that meal's even going to last me any long, so I just, you know... Then you I should say that out loud, too. Anyway. Then you should enjoy the ones that you have. Yeah. I, I enjoy the ones that I allow myself to. Fair enough. You see that she kind of forks into her chicken and begins to eat it. Is there anything anybody else would like to do before the 10 minutes is up? I can't think of anything Roger needs to do. You mean other than laugh at uh, 
Lame. Yep. Yeah. Look at that. I don't know, girl. man. I'm having a lot of I'm having a lot of fun laughing at Lame. Very good. Damn good time. So Evan. Oh yeah. As you finish your ritual cast over purify the food with your little UV light, you notice as you pass the UV light over as the ritual cast finishes, every time the light hits the food, you can see that it is clearly a different color. You can see that it is not the vibrant looking, steaming, well-colored chicken that it is. You can see like almost like a mirage where it's this fungus infected worm splitting food that's on your plate here you can see that some of your friends are devouring the plates quite well and drinking their drinks as you pass your uv light over the chicken and the potatoes all of it seems to be this same kind of grub i just uh intently look over to uh like my crew and try and make eye contact and just be like (laughs) <laughs> what? Doing? It seems to be. Within about ten minutes, if you're eating it, yeah, you're. To you're... you though, it's you're you're a flipping frog thing, Evan's doing. Yeah. You know, of course, yeah. That's the thing. If he's like, it's, it's, and it's fungus and worms. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with that. Oh my god. Damn it. I, don't, I can't do third level spells yet. Otherwise, I would have been uh-uh. Oh, well. Um, yeah, I look at Gertie. I'm like... Smart move. Yep. We, we're not really that hungry. You also passed... That also counted for your drink, right? Yeah, I definitely didn't sip anything. I asked for water, and they gave me wine. And you didn't drink yeah. it, because as you pass pass your uv light over the drink as well you can see that it's almost like a cup filled with almost like a sludge curdled blood probably yeah. okay yeah it's a good thing i actually did not drink my alcohol you had actually finished your first ale in the session before you said you downed it with grommet oh yeah yeah i did yeah i did the first one but not the second yep <laughs> Now I'm disappointed I didn't get to see these chickens. <laughs> yeah, Evan's yeah. like a little upset. It's like I was promised a good meal. I'm tired as fuck. It's been a long day. I'm getting here. Internally thinking, this is utter nonsense. Why Mrs. Mrs. Grimwatch looks this? over at you and sees that you're not eating and you seem a bit flustered on the inside. Are you not feeling well? You and your traveling companion here aren't eating. Do you guys need to maybe go lay down at the inn? I feel I may have caught a bug. Well, sorry to hear that. Would you like to go lay down at the inn? She kind of waves over one of the people. And you can see, like, it's almost like an assistant that came from the inn. You can see that it's a, like, a young male comes over. And he goes, oh, what can I do for you, Mrs. Grimwatch? I think these two need a room. They're not feeling very well. Yeah, that would actually be quite beneficial. Thank you so much. Cardi is immediately on high alert. She's going to go with him. Okay. Uh, my name is Flintmore. I'll, uh, I'll be helping you out as much as I can. So just come with me as you guys uh, leave the dinner table. So the rest of you see that Evan and Gertie didn't eat any of their food or drinks and leave the table. Hmm. Does the food taste like not like pork and beans or anything? Oh, no. It, it tastes like it. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. This is not a lose lose for ground it, but <laughs> <laughs> this is not, it's a win win either way. <laughs> okay. 
But the rest of you see that. Evan, where are you going? Where are you guys going? You got to try. Did you get the pork? Yeah, come on. Pork and beans is pretty all right. Let's, guys, they're leading us to a possible room for the night. Let's take advantage of the rest. Okay. Okay, fine. Can I get a to go bag? As uh, Flintmore goes towards the door to the inn, you can see that he doesn't reach for the handle, but he grabs a chair and puts it under the door handle and turns back around. You can see the two Grimwatches stand up out of their chair. How about you guys come back and eat your food as the rest of the room goes quiet? Evan has learned that this is where he fucked up. <laughs> as Gertie walks past her friends, she's just going to say, don't eat what you haven't earned. I played my fucking heart out. I earned this. <laughs> I thought we <laughs> lived by choice here. <laughs> So, we went from our free will to forced. Is the rest of you forced? Look, I'll eat their their food. That makes it better. Look, Roger might too. He seems to be loving it. Yeah, it's pretty good. As uh, you say, it's pretty good. Victor says, why no? They are here under their own free will. With a wave of the hand, you see that this mirage begins to fall. You see that within the tavern here, the entire roof is actually gone. You see that there's holes within the walls. You see that those that you are sitting with at the long, ripped apart, destroyed table are actually humanoid creatures with their skin like almost f like falling off like zombie creatures are those that you are yeah. dining with every plate is covered in maggoted food every drink is filled filled with sludge and uh you guys can see that colette kind of like puts her hands on both todd and grommet and goes i hope you boys are enjoying fireball, 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 fireball. the the entire building is in destruct all the glass is broken out of all the windows all of the furniture is overturned and that's where we're going to end the session wait, wait, wait i want to do one more thing just okay. one thing roger's gonna put down his fork and knife calmly Turn to to Victor and open his mouth to say something, and then just projectile vomit. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sir. <laughs> as the as as now the fla now the flavors of the rotten food have started developing. You can feel if you've eaten anything, the sense of those worms and and old rotten food sit in the bottom of your stomach not anymore now they're sitting on victim's robes <laughs> <laughs> and that's where I we'll wonder, when you said the wine turned to sludge after he cast purify food drink just like what the fuck is that <laughs> yeah oh my god wait is this bubbles worm stew <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> As you guys are at a long table surrounded or accompanied by many at zombies. Yuck. Oh dear. And that's uh the end of the session. That was good. I loved <laughs> that it. Was very good. I liked it. Yeah. It was I enjoyed my like it paid off that I actually used that as much as possible. In public. That's why I had to be like, "Can you describe it to me?" Mm -hmm. Like very much so. 
and you've been doing that at every sit down meal you've been at so it's yep. not like it's out of character either <laughs> so you guys just performed for a bunch of zombies as well no wonder why they were captivated you know they're brain dead <laughs> no. uh, you see wait what of the elf what of yeah. the elf he's also a feral zombie He's also a feral zombie. I fucking styled on a zombie. What about that bitch. hat? Was the hat still nice? Yeah, yeah, the hat. The, the top hat. Hat's nice. Okay. I told you I was going to get that hat by the end of the night. <laughs> I'm getting that hat. Dude, I need that hat. All right. Look, I will fight you for this hat. <laughs> okay, it's going to be whoever gets the hat first. <laughs> you guys have no fear of the zombies? It's just like, that's my hat. Like, he's a zombie. He can't fight back properly. <laughs> we can get that hat. <laughs> we can do a timeshare on the hat. You know? I can become Gromit, man around town. <laughs> <laughs> I can get Mondays through Wednesdays, and then you get it through uh, Saturday, and then we can switch off Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> this is stealing my shtick. Yeah, so coming to the end of the session, whatever you guys thought, I I know that there was the breakaway moment, the the fourth wall kind of breaking with uh with Sir Nicholas. Mm -hmm. No, I like mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I don't know if you should have maybe switched those around and like the reveal was then and then we go to Nicholas and it's like Oh yeah, the town's on fire and zombies. Like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah but then we're suspecting like, oh, there's gonna be attack after dinner, or like, you know, this thing is gonna happen. But like, <laughs> the zombies are already there. A, B, you're eating zombie food. <laughs> <laughs> what a twist. <laughs> And see, you liked it. <laughs> uh, dark and darker playtest starts on the sixth. Oh, yep. Nice. Barbarian. Three days. Yeah, they're gonna have new classes apparently. Uh, maybe on this one. I don't know. So you know that, that in next session we're gonna be rolling for who's sick or not. I know I won't be. Hopefully. Well, if it's poison, <laughs> I can't because I can't. Because there you go. We're gonna see uh, between Roger and and Todd. <laughs> Look, I'm fine. I projectile vomited it all over Victor. <laughs> so I'm fine. Or does that mean he auto fails because like he's already puking? <laughs> right. He said he's puking. But yeah, I'm glad that you guys uh, kept up and kept along with it. It was good. I enjoyed it. I'm really proud of you for not, like, really leaning into everybody and saying, well, like, okay, but you took a bite, though, right? Like, okay, so you, so you drink the ale, right? I'm very proud look, of you. Look, look. I knew something was wrong the second he started asking about the exact wording of purify food and drink. And at that point, I was like, oh, fuck it. I might as well just play into it, I guess. <laughs> I knew something was wrong. I was expecting we were all going to get knocked out. I was I had expecting moldy food. I intended to overeat and drink as, as Roger just to vomit on Victor <laughs> anyway. Be back. This is a perfect ending for me. I see this as a win. <laughs> but like that's the funny. outside you knows that's not even Victor. Well yeah, but he doesn't know. He that. doesn't know, yeah. Yeah. Uh. <sighs> Which is even more perfect. Yeah, I didn't want to go like 
diving right into the idea that you want to go asking each person if they're taking a bite or like having a drink. It's just kind of it was who said that they weren't <laughs> kind of idea. Mm-hmm. You're kind of doing as the crowd does kind of thing. Mm-hmm. If food gets served and you're not eating, it's going to kind of, and everybody else is eating, like the attention would be brought upon you. Like, yeah. are you not feeling good? Like, why aren't you eating? Know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Now, I'm surprised Will didn't go for the you expect me to eat this, Will? <laughs> <laughs> A very good performance is out of the two of you. What can I say? I try. Oh, man, you had me in stitches. You guys had me in stitches. It was great. <laughs> guys, you guys absolutely brought your A game. Like, you guys did fantastic. <laughs> Like, I was going to try and attempt to do it regular magician style, and then I noticed Gromit pull the sombrero, and I was like, wait a second. (laughs) (laughs) I can work with this. (laughs) (laughs) Glamour weave, go! As if you were calling him handsome the whole time, though. Yeah! (laughs) Only part of it. (laughs) Hello, handsome. Yeah, I guess. I got my shit mixed up. <laughs> In a sparkly sequined outfit. <laughs> yeah. 